Instagram always gets first. I won't say like you guys the best, but you know, you won't say that. <laughs> plates, pressed plates, pressed bowls, little cute little pressed bowls actually. We're gonna have a good time making these. It's gonna be fun. All right, everybody, hello, welcome in. I'm gonna be doing the second demo for today and that is gonna be pressed bowls and dishes. And we'll talk a bit about pressed plates like this one here. And it's made the same way as I'll be making these little dishes that I have here too. So we're just gonna talk about this and uh, I'm gonna show you how to make some. We're also gonna be using one of Garrity Tools anvils right here. And we're gonna use this to make little bowls. Now I use these as little dip bowls, like a little, little mini salsa or guacamole bowl or something. But you can make them bigger if you want to. And Garrity Tools makes larger anvils, so you could get bigger ones and make bigger bowls. But the process I'm gonna show you would be the same, whether you're gonna use the small ones or the big ones, it does not matter. It's all the same. So, hi everybody joining, welcome in. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. And do I think a dipping version of my Chun Blue will be available? My, that already is available, so if you're looking for my Chun Blue glaze in a dippable version, you can get that from Clayscapes Pottery, and you can order that uh, right now. Actually, speaking of my Chun Blue, this is my Chun Blue on a nice dark clay. This is Laguna 90, that's what clay this is, and that is my Chun Blue on it. So it really pops a nice bright blue on that. It looks different on every clay. It's, it's really cool that that works out that way. All right, so we're gonna start. We're just gonna do it. We're gonna start making. Um, I started making press plates ages ago, over 10 years ago now I've been making press plates. I actually injured my hand in the studio uh, and I couldn't throw. So I was carrying, funny thing, I'll tell you a funny story before we get started. I was carrying a pot I had carved, which this kind of works well, the story happening now, because I just finished a Scraffito carving demo. I was carrying a pot through the studio. I was actually carrying it in this hand through the studio. And I tripped and I fell and I just carved the pot and I did not want the pot to break. So what did I do? I took my hand like this and I put it out and I caught all my weight on my hand splayed out. What do you think happened to this poor hand? I damaged it pretty bad. Uh, it was about six months before I could throw again. I had damaged the little cross, little fibers in here, all the little muscles. It was a mess, but I came back from it and was able to throw eventually, right? But in that time period where I couldn't throw, I started hand building. That's really what pushed me into hand building. And I would say that was about 10 years ago now, and I got a slab roller pretty quickly because I didn't wanna have to roll all my slabs out by hand. The um, slab roller makes life so much easier. Rolling by hand, especially with my hand injury. I, and, and keep in mind, I'm, I was a production potter, which meant my whole entire living was dependent on me making pottery and a lot of pottery every, every week. I had to crank out pottery to pay my bills. So I had to make pots somehow. So buying a slab roller was an investment in my business. So that's why I justified buying the slab roller I have and I've never regretted it. I love it to pieces, absolutely love it. And then I started rolling out my slabs. I was using my own templates that I was cutting out of cardboard and I was making my own pressers or inserts, which were basically like wooden circles or wooden ovals or rectangles that I would cut out from pieces of wood when I first, first started. And this is one of my early plates that, um, this design here, this is actually a paper plate that I found at a store that I used as a template. And then I had a piece of one by six that I pressed into to make the, um, to make the flat. And I think I show how to make this in my pressed plates class. And they are really fun. And I did do a, a live video last week on preventing warping. And really it's just when they're drying, I weigh them down. And for all the people who ask about feet, this one has no feet, it's footless, but it still sits nice and flat and it looks good. So you don't have to put feet on everything, right? You don't have to. All right, so um, other little things you can make. 
these are great if you make pottery to sell and as someone who used to make pottery full-time as a production potter now I still make pottery full-time as a teacher and running clay share so it's a little different the way that I work now uh, I'm not really trying to make as many pieces but if you're looking for some little things to sell if you're going to craft fairs or art fairs or you have an online shop you can make these own super cute little trinket dishes like this and I'll show you how to make these right here um, you can also make, you know, different shapes, little little heart-shaped ones, and these sweet little guys, which I keep by my sink to put my rings in when I'm doing the dishes or something. So these are just sweet little ring dishes, or just anytime you need a little spoon rest or a knife rest, these are great for that. All right, let's make pots. <laughs> let's make some pots. It's always the most fun. Um, so for pressed plates and pressed dishes, you have to have something to press them into. I have a couple different sized pieces of upholstery foam in my studio. You can get upholstery foam from Amazon. You can get it from Joanne Fabrics. Everybody always wants to know how thick my upholstery foam is. So I'm going to measure it for you right now because you want it to be thick enough so you can really, really press. This is a four and a half, four and a half inches right here, four and a half inches. So that's what you want, four to four and a half, because we're gonna make smaller plates right now, but if you wanna make large ones, you need to have foam as big as the largest one is you're gonna make. So if I wanted to do a plate this big, I would use my bigger piece of foam. This one will work for smaller pieces, and that's what we're gonna do. And where can, someone wants to know, where can you get pretty plate forms? This right here, the outside of this was a paper plate from the hobby store. Check out paper plates. They make great templates for the outsides. And since I discovered GR Pottery Forms, I use those a lot. Here's another paper plate. Here's a paper plate from the hobby store. I bought a pack of these when they went on clearance after Thanksgiving last year. And um, it's great because it will work with the rectangle GR Pottery Forms that I have here and they make great press plates. We're gonna make one of these. We're gonna make a press plate from that. So, let me stop talking about what we're gonna make. Let's actually make it. Let's just do it. Let's make some stuff. All right, I got some clay over here that I rolled out earlier. And the beautiful thing about my slab roller, or any slab roller really, is it allows you to roll out your slab ahead of time and just cover it with plastic. And you can see how we're going to switch our view so that you are all coming from the overhead and you can see oh and save these scraps scraps like this are gold because you can make a ton of little trinket dishes with these don't ever throw your your scraps away so we're going to set that to the side and i can show you how i store my my slabs so you can see right here this is a slab i rolled out Actually, I rolled this out yesterday. And after I rolled it out, what I did is I laid it on a piece of plastic. So there's plastic under it. And then I wrapped the top and I sealed it up with plastic like this. And I'll fold the ends up and everything. I'll make sure it's completely sealed. And it will last for me for a couple of days and stay nice and soft and completely usable, folded up like this. And you might have noticed I had another piece right on top. I will put up to two to three sheets on top of each other and they don't stick and you just lift it off and then you put the plastic back on and keep going right so this is a great way if you want to roll out your plastic early in the day I mean roll out your slab cover it in plastic and then you'll be able to use it whenever you want so now I'm going to take the plastic off and we're just gonna peel that off there And I'll prep it just like I would prep any slab of clay that I've rolled out. And because I used the canvas, I need to go ahead and smooth away that canvas texture. Now, you don't have to have a slab roller to make these plates, not at all. You can roll out slabs with a rolling pin. You don't need to use a, use a slab roller. You don't have to. It's just I have one, and because the volume of work I make, for me, it makes sense. 
So a great suggestion I just saw on the feed is that one of our viewers said that her husband saves the dry cleaning bags for the plastic. Yes, dry cleaning bags make fabulous plastic for storing your clay in and for covering your pieces too so that they don't dry out. And you can use this, yes, I see someone saying so many soap dishes, yes. This is a great way to make soap dishes. It's a really great technique for that. So we're good, on, we're ready to go. And I think we're gonna start with the small little dishes and we'll work our way up to bigger dishes, just because that's easier. So this one's prepped and ready to go. And since we're gonna start small, let's just go ahead and grab that, that strip that I had. We're gonna go with this guy right here. And eh, I think we can work on an angle. I don't really wanna cut any off because I don't wanna waste any. So this piece is as thick as I, when I first rolled it out and it's a little too thick for small dishes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and thin it down with my rolling pin just a bit, just to take it down a little bit because it was a little thicker than I wanted for small pressed dishes. All right, now we're gonna put texture in it. You don't have to if you don't want to. The texture is entirely up to you. This was a quarter of an inch when I rolled it out and it was a little too thick. So I decided to go ahead and make it a little thinner. Let me see if I can adjust the zoom. There we go. And I'm loving the Southwestern pattern rolling pin. This is my design and you can get them from claysharemarket.com. We are giving away three rolling pins on Wednesday. Use the bunny one. Oh, want to see the bunny? Okay, we can use the bunny. You know what, we'll do both. We'll do both bunnies. Bunny's my newest design. We'll do Southwest on half and bunnies on the other half. What do you say? Yay! I knew you'd agree with me. All right, so let's do bunnies. Bunnies on this half. And then we'll do Southwest on the other half. They're not Southwest bunnies, but you know. And there's the Southwest on that half. So we've got two patterns on one. How fun is that? So we'll just cut this here because we know um, that that's not gonna, that's, that would not be a plate. All right, now, press little dishes. Fun way to do it is to use cookie cutters. And people always ask me what I use on the inside. So here's, believe it or not, this size. This actually will shrink down to this. I use these pressers that I make. This is just a little piece of clay that I attached a handle to and bisque fired it. So basically it's a stamp. And I measured it, if you look in here, to see that I had um, about, I would say a good half inch all the way around for a rim. And that's, that's how I did this one here. Now for this right here, which is this shape here, so you can see that that shrunk that much, I used a circle cookie cutter and I made a whole bunch. I made one in about every size that I have. And that way, this is the presser. So you make your own pressers. People ask all the time where to buy the pressers. You don't, you don't buy them, you just make them. It's super easy, really easy. So we will make something in both. Let's do the bunny. Let's see, mm, bunny, are you gonna be, bunny's gonna be this one. I'm gonna do the little one with the bunny. Although I really like the oval, I like the oval with the bunny. So we're gonna do the oval. So you start by cutting out your cookie cutter shape to get your outside profile. And let's do these for this. Let's line it up somewhere nice. That's good, we'll go there. And all these scraps, what you do is you wad them all up into a ball, and then you go ahead and dunk them in your working water and just wedge them up and keep going with them. And you can make a ton of pieces. So we made two here. So I'll show you what I do. This is what I do. I grab all my scraps and B mix tends to dry pretty fast. And then I have a bucket of my water that I'm working with. I just dip it in there like that, the whole entire thing. And I will have a board sitting off to the side usually, and I'll just set this there, just like that. And it makes a little bit of a mess, but 
by the time I get to it, it'll be ready to be wedged up and I can make something with that. So once we have the outsides made, we're going to go ahead and press them. And this is the most fun part and it's really, really simple. So we'll start with the small ones. Here is my foam and you can tell it's, it's been around a long time. It's pretty beat up. And how do you keep or press with the handle on them? So the handle's on the back so that you can hold on to it. So that's why we have a handle, is so you just press. You're pressing the flat part in. So let's start with this. Just line it up. And you get it approximately in center. Just like everything handmade, perfectly and perfect is what we're going for. Well, I just like to rock it a little bit. And you can see what we have. And then I'm going to transfer it to my board, press it, and there I have a little, a little dish, just like that. Cute little trinket dish. Let's do another one. So you get the idea with this, right? This is really simple. Pressed plates, you can make them so fast, and it's a great way to do test tiles. I'm going to just press it. Okay, so here's a little tip I'm going to give you all. When I transfer it, I do this. I press down just a little bit again, and what I'm doing is I'm seeding that clay onto this board. I'm pressing this clay onto the board, and then I remove that, I adjust my rim, and I let it stay here. Because I flattened it onto the board, I don't really have to worry about the warping issues that I might have with bigger pieces. So, so for small stuff like this, I'm just gonna cover it with plastic and let it dry, and it should be fine. I don't have to um, I don't have to worry about it warping so much. Bigger pieces, you have to deal with it. I see there's a question about where did my dirty water go? I switched it out. I switched it out during the break. I have a big five gallon bucket that I pour all of my dirty water into in my studio because I do not have running water here, not in the studio. And I will let it settle and skim the water off and then I scoop out all the dry materials and I take care of that. So this I actually have a smaller circle I usually use. This one's my, this is my oval. Hey Kev, in the bottom left drawer of my texture tool chest, will you get the oval? There'll be an oval presser. So I'll show you an oval one. This is a round one. I do have an oval one, which matches the profile of this better. Here's the oval. Fits much better. And so we're gonna press this down, rock it a little bit, because you want to pop those sides up. That's what makes it work. you got to pop them up. So you had some foam, but it was too stiff. So you want it to be a medium density foam, but not, look, I'll squeeze it. Do you see how we can squeeze it? You want to have a stiffness to it. It does have to be pretty stiff. So again, we have this on the board, and we're just going to press it down, pull it out, and then shape it. And you see our textures are still there. We haven't lost any of that. It's, it's completely still there. I do use the small GR pottery forms and we're gonna get there. We're, we're going there next. You're ahead of me, Deb. Deb's way ahead of me. So we're gonna continue with the dishes and then we'll do the bowls after. So let's do one more plate. And for this one, we're gonna get a little fancy. We're gonna step it up and do something a little fancy. Not, not a lot fancy. So I'm just going to grab uh, my piece of clay over here. So here's my piece of clay and I'm going to use this form right here which is just a paper plate to cut it out so that I have a really nice outline, right? A nice profile. And I'm going to add texture to it. Um, let's use this. This will be fun. And I'm going to do um, I'm going to do something a little different. So we're going to roll this one in that way, and then we're going to roll it this way, like that. So I rolled in two directions to make this kind of funky pattern on here. So we'll release that. So you see how I did that? That's, that's a fun thing to do. Let's come in a little closer. Let's see if we can. There we go. So you can see that one, the pattern's coming in from one direction and from another direction, and it just creates a little more visual interest if you play with it like that. 
and then we'll put this one on. Now, we could line it up so that this line is in the middle, or we could go two-thirds. I'm thinking we're going to do two-thirds, like that. And then, using my clay knife, which we gave away three packs of Dolan tools yesterday, and that this particular knife was in that. We're just going to cut. following the outside of this paper plate. And you know, you can always find different paper plates on sale at the hobby and craft stores, at um, local stores. They always put them on sale. Go for the sale aisle. I mean, sometimes you'll see a pattern you're like, I have to have that, I can't wait. So sometimes you buy at full price, but it's a paper plate. It, it really doesn't cost that much. And you can use them over and over and over. But they make great templates, and they're really inexpensive. So I'm going to pop that off, remove this, and look how pretty that is. If you wanted to make a trivet, you could have made a trivet right then and there. All you'd have to do is let this dry nice and flat, and you would have a really cute trivet. So let's pull our foam back out. Now, one little thing I like to tell people is if your clay is too wet and floppy, it'll be hard to do the press plates with. If it's too dry, you're going to get cracking right here at this point. So if you notice that your plates, when you're pressing them, are cracking here, that is because they're too dry. And if they're not holding the sides up, you see how we have a little nice raised side. If they're not holding the side up, that's because your clay is too wet. So just keep that in mind. And as far as rolling out how much pressure, you want to push downward and you don't want to crush your clay, but really you want to get a good impression. So you want to make sure that you press in hard enough for that. So I have got a few JR Pottery forms, square forms, but mind you, when I was starting out, I didn't have these forms. What I did was I either used pieces of wood I cut myself, or you can actually make your own bisque piece. You can make a little bisque presser just big for a bigger piece. You certainly can do that. You just have to measure and, and you know, kind of play with shape and size. And you can use, right, so I saw the comment, you can take your paper plates and make a foam template from it. You, sir, yes, ma'am, you can. Yep. So now we're going to transfer this to the foam. Now, I would probably be switching to my big foam right about now, but it's not, I have it across the room, so, and I don't really have space for it. So we're going to make do with the smaller, and we're going to press this in. And you could make smaller dishes. You know, I have the smaller sizes if you want to. All right, so ready? So can a trivet tolerate putting a hot pot pan on it without cracking? Um, depending on the clay you're using, they can. Yeah. Ready? We're going to press it now. This is what we're all waiting for. Hold your breath. <laughs> press, press, wiggle back and forth, side to side. And I'm just going to flip it over to show you how, what we've done. Do you see that pressing? It's conformed it to the form. Now, we could have draped this and smoothed it the exact same way if we wanted to, uh, like I was doing yesterday with making plates with JR Pottery forms. But this is just another way to do it. So once I've pressed it, oftentimes, you know, you'll want to go ahead and pull it off onto your board. So here I have my board. And we'll just lift up our form. And then you just want to check your edges. You just want to check them and make sure that they're raised as much as you want. So here we have the plate. And you can see we've got a nice little raised edge. And we have a really cute pattern. And you don't have to put a foot on it if you don't want to, but if you do want to, you saw how I flipped this over and was showing you how it looked. You could have 
just left it flipped over and added a foot right then and there if you want a foot on it but you don't have to you can just leave them flat now let's talk about warping because oftentimes flat plates and platters try to warp on us and I did do a whole live broadcast just about warping but what I will do with this is this will sit as it is in the studio for the rest of today at the end of the day before I go in I will put plastic on it so I'll put a sheet of plastic on it and I'll weigh it down with my weight bags Kev you grab me a weight bag so I can share it with folks out of the drawer there so I can show you what a weight bag looks like I showed them yesterday and this is one of the, these are smaller ones this was just little bits of a shirt sleeve and you'll put multiples on so you might put four little ones on here's a little bit bigger one and you can see how it was a shirt sleeve I cut it tied a knot in one end and then filled it full of kitty litter and tied a knot in the other end and so I won't do anything to the edges at all I will let this stiffen up until it's leather hard completely leather hard I don't want to warp it I don't want to do anything to it at all that could damage the shape and when it gets to be leather hard I will smooth my edges and honestly that's just really simple I'll take my sponge and I'll just run it along the edges here use my fingers like this you see how flexible it is it's a little too early to do this but just to give you the next step that's what we do and you smooth it out like that and that will finish your edge for you and that's it it's done you just made a plate how fast was that that was really fast so you can make a plate super fast now I'm trying to keep up with the comments uh, everybody's sending my way and the great thing about this is if you want to make a set of dishes pretty quickly you could certainly do so so that's plates let's move on and let's make some bowls so we'll put this down there that sweet little plate and we've got our little pressed trinket dishes too so if we're gonna do a bowl you'll need a circle right and you need something to drape that circle on so this is an anvil it's called and they're made for um, well they're really made for when you're hand building uh, a coil pot and you'd put this on the inside and you'd use a paddle on the outside to paddle the sides of the pot that's what these are really made for so they're a coil building tool but we took it and we're gonna do slab building with it because that's what we do we use tools for multiple things we don't just do one thing at all so someone was asking about the weight bags absorbing moisture too fast actually the weight bags help even it out because let's talk a bit we'll go back you know that's what I'm here for we're sitting on a wooden board so when we're sitting on this wooden board like we are the board is wicking moisture from the bottom so you have the moisture being pulled from the bottom but not from the top so what you can do is you can put your weight bags directly on this or like I had mentioned when I cover these I cover with them with plastic first and then I put my weight bags on top so we're only drying from the bottom the moisture is being pulled out now can you put the weight bags on top without the plastic you certainly can and it just means you're having moisture pulled from the bottom and from the top so honestly they equal each other out and I don't I don't ever have a problem now I've been doing plates like this for 10 years so I've got a tiny bit of experience with it just a tiny bit and for me I have found that plastic no plastic eh, doesn't make much of a difference as far as drying goes it all works great all right so let's go ahead and make the bowls so let me grab another board I have an endless supply of boards behind me <laughs> we can we can just keep going as long as I've got clay we're good to go can just keep on making all right we're gonna add a pattern to this uh, you don't have to though I always put texture in my hand-built work I really like texture but if you don't want to you don't have to or if you want to do something like I did here where I did a Mishima inlay you see I only added texture to the border right and this was a press plate just like the square one we made exactly the same but I carved this in so this is all hand carved and we'll be doing this tomorrow we'll be carving 
Maybe not this particular design or this plate, but we'll be doing something like this tomorrow. So for the anvil, to make a little small dish, something like this right here, I'm just going to use a five inch circle cookie cutter and we can add our texture to it. Um, let me grab a rolling pin. We'll do, we'll do something really fun. This is based on feed sacks. Do you guys know what a feed sack is or feed cloth? Um, my gram grew up on a farm, my mom grew up on a farm, and they would always use the feed sacks or feed cloth that the animal feed came in to make aprons and to make dish towels and sometimes clothes, sometimes dresses. And that's where the gunny sack ideas come from. So this is based on a vintage piece of fabric and it's very mid-century modern too because it would have been something that came out around the 40s and 50s. So I'm going to roll this pattern in. And this one's really fun because it's non-directional, so you can just go in any direction with it and make a really long strip of clay. But that is a super fun pattern, and I, I love seeing it on here. And then let's cut out, I'm trying to pick. This is the hard part, right? Picking where you're going to actually cut your circle for your design. Oh, but that's cool too, but that's right in the middle. Mmm, that's really cool. But so is that. All right, we're cutting here. <laughs> this, it's a really fun roller and it has a lot of um, sentimentality for me because it's based on my, you know, a pattern that my, my great gram and my gram would have used. So the rest of this, we're gonna use for little trinket dishes. I mean, it's, it's right here and we're gonna go ahead and cut because it's just too good not to, right? And then you'll have a little bit of scrap to recycle, to wedge back up, but the rest of it is all gonna be dishes. Ooh, can we fit this? Can we fit? Can we fit? I think we can just barely fit. Just barely. <laughs> it was close, but it fit. Look at that. And then we have this here, which mm, I think I'll smooth this out and I will add texture to this, so I won't wedge that part back up. We'll just use that. So we've got a couple more trinket dishes coming down the line, and we're going to make some small bowls with this. And now this bowl technique, although we're making little ones, you can make big ones too. You're just limited to the size of what you're using. So I'm using an anvil, but anything you have that has this curved form on it, you can use to press your bowl with anything at all. So it doesn't have to be, I actually have some molds that I've thrown, some drape molds that you can use to make bowls with. So let's turn this over and line it up about in the center and just press down and roll it around a bit. And look at that. It's conformed to the shape. The feed sack rolling pin is actually called Vintage Geometric. So that pattern I'm using, we, we named it the Vintage Geometric pattern, and you can buy it at claysharemarket.com. Now we are giving three rolling pins away on Wednesday, and you would get to pick your design. So if you won, you would, could pick it. But if you can't wait or don't want to take the chance, you certainly can go ahead and purchase one. So I'm going to add some feet. You'll notice that I have this little piece here that has some little feet on it. And I'm just gonna quickly make up some feet from the scrap clay. And I'm just gonna wedge it up really quickly, rolling a coil in my hand and then out on my work table. I would say that's a three quarter inch thick, maybe half, somewhere in there, little coil. Now you don't have to add feet. If I turn this over, and I sit it on a surface and I just kind of press it down a bit, this right here will flatten the bottom a little bit and it will sit. But I, I do want feet for it. I want to raise it up. So I see a really good question about how thin is too thin. I roll my slabs out at a quarter of an inch thick, which works really well for many, many things. Um, I think if you get down to an eighth of an inch, you're getting a little too thin. And the thinness and thickness is entirely um,
based on what you're making. Little things you want to be thinner, big things you want to be to be a little thicker, right? So I just cut this up into four equal parts. I'm going to roll each part into a ball. So I see a good comment that someone uses half steer styrofoam for pressing. Uh, that, that, you're right, it would work great. It would work great. Oh, and another comment back on the kitty litter. What kind is it? It's, it's not clumping. It's non-clumping, yes. It's just standard, inexpensive kitty litter, the non-clumping variety. So we have four little balls right here. And yes, you can do three because everybody is always saying a tripod stable. But I have to tell you, when you put three feet on, there's always one side that's a little wobbly. It just happens. So I'm going to tamp these just to make a little flat side. And then I'm going to set our feet on. Now I'm going to shape these, but not till they're attached. And you can use this, you can make them round and have little round ball feet if you want, but it's entirely up to you. I'm going to shape them a little after though. We'll get there. So we're going to slip, and I'm, you notice how I'm only slipping and scoring the little feet so far because I want to make sure I have them where I want them before I commit. So let's see, am I happy with where they are? Yes. So now I remove, slip and score where they were, and I just twist and wiggle, and we're going to come back and do a little refining, but this is just getting them on there. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And you know the fun thing when you're attaching stuff, you'll feel it catch. You'll feel the clay actually grab each other. The two, two pieces will grab when you're doing this. And you'll be like, oh, that's on now. And we'll wiggle this one on too. And I'm not worried that I'm messing up the ball shape because I'm going to go ahead and mess it up a lot. So I'm going to take my fingers like this, like a little pinching motion. And I'm just going to pinch in and down, just like that. You see how I made that shape? Just like that. And I'm going to do that here. And you might notice I have my anvil stuck in a vase. <laughs> Wait, let's just talk about that. I have my anvil stuck in a vase to hold it so that I can work, right? So that's thinking um, you know, outside the box a little bit. Press that down. And let's do this last one here. We'll go this way. Press, press. And then the only thing you do is, is clean up. I have a few little areas. And any slip you have that has squeezed out, you know, clean that up. If you really want to get in there and get all that slip out, just go ahead and use this color shaper, this little rubber tip tool that I'm using here, and that will really get in there. And we'll just clean up. So now we're ready to take this out of the anvil. And if you want to go ahead and flatten that first to make sure it's nice and level, let's grab, let's grab a board. And we're just going to like that. So I just flattened my feet a bit. And now we're going to turn it over onto our board and see what we got. So I have a question about the weight bags. Is kitty litter the best thing? You could use rice, you could use beans, you can use anything you want. I like the fine grain um, aspect of kitty litter so that I don't have any marks left behind. All right, so we're just gonna turn this over. And then because this anvil is a wooden anvil, it doesn't really stick as much as another material might. This one I really pressed hard. So we just have to work it a bit. You see, we're just working it out. Take your time. And the whole thing will pop right out. And then you just shape it back if it distorted at all. And there's your super cute little bowl like that. How cute is that? So let's see if you can see how cute. Let's see if I can turn it even more. <laughs> Woo! Tip it. Tipsy there because I tipped it up too much so you could see. Um, so do you want to smooth your edges right now? No, you want to let your edges set a little bit because if you try to smooth them with the sponge, you could end up having a little bit of wibble wobble, but I'm going to show you something you can do. 
and I see a question about the work board. This is birch plywood, but honestly, you can use you can use any plywood you want. It doesn't have to be um, birch. All right, I'm going to show you a cool way to do a ruffled edge. This one here has a ruffled edge, and that's what we're going to do. Could you wait to remove the bowl? You could wait a little bit. Also, if your clay is a little wet, my clay was a little bit wetter than I normally would use it. It, it releases easier when the clay is a little drier and you let it wait a little bit. So I'm just going to do this. Taking my index finger underneath and then I've got two fingers making a U on top and I'm just pushing up. See that? Right there. We just did that. Easy. Just line up, push. And then you just go around and you do this little ruffle and it gives a little bit of a fancier edge. Let's see, can we get two more in here? I think we can right here, the little one there. So we made a ruffle edged uh, little bowl. So this is a cute little trinket bowl because it's a smaller anvil, but if you got a bigger one or used like someone was saying that styrofoam sphere, say that five times fast. <laughs> or made your own drape mold, you certainly could make a larger piece, right? And this anvil here is a four inch right here. And I see a question asking about the bottom of a mug. I use four inch cookie cutters for the bottoms of my mugs in my mug tutorial. And actually that's on YouTube. I have a how to make a um, hand built mug, but on clayshare.com I have at least five hand built mug classes. So you can go there and check those out. So let's finish these up. I want to press these other trinket dishes out. I don't want to lose those. And we'll do that one last bowl and we'll make that too. But I definitely want to get these trinket dishes done because I do not want to lose those. They are super cute. So we got that oval. And remember, I just made this. This was just a cookie cutter. That was an oval that I attached a coil to to make my presser. And these anvils are made by Garrity Tools. That's who makes the anvil I'm using. So let's grab our, our trinket dish board. Move our foam. Pressing it down. And we'll do another. So look how cute. Now all these edges on these trinket dishes will need to be smoothed out after they've sat a bit. So usually tomorrow, I will come out the next day and I'll smooth all the edges. Let me press that down good. Got our board right here. This clay is a tiny bit thick for making trinket dishes. I would probably roll it a little thinner and I could get many more trinket dishes out of it if I do that. But you know, just to show you how easy and quick it is to make these things. It's just a, a nice tutorial for that. All right, let's make, let's make another bowl. And let's not do a foot. Let's not do feet. I did make the presser. Yes, again, it's just a cookie cutter that I cut a circle out with. And I took a coil and attached the handle. That's it. You just slip and score and attach a handle. Let it dry. Bisque fire it. And now you've got a presser. And so whenever you see my videos and you all, people are always asking me, where do I get that little tool? It's a presser and I made it from a stamp. It's basically a bisque stamp and you can make them too. They're really easy. So let's press this one. And we won't put a foot on this one, right? We're not gonna foot this one. And we just roll it around. Now look at that. We took the anvil right out. I did not wait at all. Do you see how I just did that? I just rolled it around and we've got a bowl. Just a simple fast bowl. If you are just learning pottery and you want a simple way to make a bowl or you're teaching kids how to make pottery, do you see how fast that happened? Do you see how easy that was? I'm going to make another one. Let me get another piece of clay. And then look, we just set it on our board and just by sitting it on the board, it flattens out. The bottom flattens out enough it's a different type of bowl, but yet it's still a bowl. If you have a bigger anvil or styrofoam ball or something like that, it would work for that. So I have got this piece of clay right here. 
let's see if we can make this work. Here's another board. I think we're going to roll that out a bit and we're going to make it so that it will work and we'll, we'll do another, we'll do another design on it too. So roll it out till I get, trying to get to that five inch circle almost there. I think when I add the texture, it will be there. Right, so the anvil came out easier because the clay was not as wet, but also the clay didn't sit on it as long. When the clay sits on the surface longer, you know, it's sticking more. The longer it's on there, the more it's going to stick. So by um, removing it sooner, it came out much easier, and by not, um, not having it quite so dry. Let's pick another rolling pin. Mushrooms! We have to do mushrooms. We have to have mushrooms, right? So let's see, which direction? Will I roll this way? We're going to do the mushrooms because we haven't done mushrooms yet. And you notice when you roll your texture and it stretches the clay a tiny bit. So that little extra bit I needed, I got like that. Perfect, perfect little mushroom dish. So cute. It's a little blurry on YouTube. Let me hook you up there. Did it come back in? Um. Part of it is the clay and the board are so, so close to the same tone that it's, it lo it's looking just generally soft down there at that level. Is it? Rolling pins and everything sharp. and everything else is sharp. Good to know. All right. So here we have our little mushroom bowl. Could I dust the clay before anvil? Sure. Let me do that, actually. I've got... So what could you do if you're finding sticking with anything... Um, I've got a container here of cornstarch, and if you find that whatever you're using is, is sticking a bit and you don't want it to stick, you could go ahead and use a little cornstarch. Now I see a comment, do I ever use plastic under my cookie cutters? I have tried that. Um, what happens is I often forget to do it and it's just another step, and I haven't had any issues with the cookie cutters releasing. So do you see I took the tiniest bit of cornstarch on my brush, uh, a cheap makeup brush, everyone. That's what this is. And you just roll it up, like on, like in a rolling motion. See how we're swirling it? And that will dust it. You don't need a lot of cornstarch on there. But it will help it release more if it was sticky. Um, and I know a lot of people will actually dip their cookie cutters in cornstarch before they cut. And that also will help it release easier. But can you use plastic when you're cutting into your clay with a cookie cutter? Yes. And you get a softer look. Let's go ahead and do this. Ready? We're going to press down. And while we're down, we're going to roll. Just roll it around and then pop out. And you would think that this would crush the texture and that we would lose that sweet little mushroom. But we have not. Not at all. It's still there. How cute is that? So we'll put this on our board with our other one. Move this over, just like that. And that gives us a few, a few bowls, some trinket dishes, and this plate right here. Yeah, the rolling pins on claysharemarket.com, all of the rolling pin designs that, that I have, my own designs, are on claysharemarket.com, and that's what I'm using here today. Um, so someone else asked about spraying the wood with Pam. That's a very good suggestion. You can. I usually use on wood cornstarch um, on my clay if it's wooden and I'm having sticking. But if it's plastic, I will spray with Pam or another nonstick cooking spray. All right, so I guess we could switch the angle back up to the, the top and we can talk about everything here um, that we have going on because there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot that we did, right? And someone asked, do I put anything on my rolling pins? I do not. Uh, I don't have a problem with them sticking. I always roll out my clay, smooth it out, and then I let it set for 10 or so minutes, sometimes 20, depending on how humid my studio is. And then I just roll directly in. But if you buy my rolling pins, you will want to treat them before you use them just like you would a handmade cutting board. And I rub mineral oil on with a cloth. 
and let it set overnight and then it's good to go the next day. And then usually like once a year I'll put another coat on, but uh, it's, an, it's just to keep the wood in really good shape so that you can have it for a very long time. That's all, super easy. All right, so we made a mess on this table. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of stuff on the table, but we have our trinket dishes over here. We have all the cookie cutters we use. We have the, the anvil. That's, that's just spinning away over there. <laughs> and we're just gonna let it do its thing. And we have this plate that we made using the GR Pottery Form squares and the um, paper plate as the template right there. How awesome is that? So, do you need to buy fancy tools to make push press plates? No, not at all. You can make your own. You can make your own templates. You can draw out your own templates. You don't even have to buy paper plates. Uh, I have a class on clayshare.com that teaches you how to make your own templates. It's actually really easy. You can make your own pressers like I've done, right? So you make your own pressers. You don't have to spend any money to do that. You just have to have the materials, right? So you could do that. Now, cookie cutters are relatively inexpensive, so you can get those here, there, and everywhere. And just make a presser that matches up to the cookie cutter you have. So. Here I have this little square that fits this square right here, right? So much stuff, right? So fabulous. And then of course, if you have the Garrity anvil, which we're gonna give some away, so some pe four people are gonna have this, and they'll be able to use it with a five inch cookie cutter, so it's just an inch bigger. So if you buy a four inch anvil, get a six inch cookie cutter, simple. And then you can make your own little bowls, and of course the bowls will be bigger because you'll have a bigger cookie cutter, right? So easy, so fun, and so fast to make. And if you buy the GR Pottery Forms, you know, you can always find a little plate that will match up, and then you can make pressed plates. This one here that I showed at the beginning, I used the paper plate for the profile, and then this was a one by six that I just cut down, so that's a board. I just cut a board down, I pressed it in, so this one right here was made the exact same way as this one. It's just a little different shape. So lots of ways to make plates. You can really make plates as big as you want or cute little trinket dishes with this, this technique. Pressing in the foam has been around for a long time and I know I, I'm certainly not the first and I won't be the last to use it and I love seeing what everybody makes with it, so give it a try and share what you make, make some stuff, and be sure to tune in at three o'clock p.m. Eastern because I'm giving away four of the Garrity Anvils. We're giving away 10, hold on, 10 12 packs of the new Speedball Underglaze, and I have the colors for you, you wanna hear? You wanna hear the new Underglaze colors, the brand new ones? They are Carmine Flame Red, Soft Pink, Peach, Mandarin Orange, saffron yellow, avocado, leaf green, teal, blue frost, amethyst, and royal purple. So that's the 12 new colors from Speedball, and we're also giving away 10 glaze sample packs from Amico. Not today? We're not doing Speedball today? No. What? It's on my list. Kevin just said no Speedball today. No. I'm sorry. 10 racks, Garrity tools, oh. the 10 Amico I have it on my list. You're okay, looking at day three. I'm looking at day three. I'm on the wrong day. Okay, wait, back it up. That's tomorrow we're giving it away. Okay, so for today we're giving away 10 glaze sample packs with the brand new glazes from Amico. And we're also giving away two of the rolling pin racks that will hold six rolling pins. So if you have a rolling pin collection like I do, I actually have two of the big racks, um, you can have a place to hang them in your studio or in your kitchen or wherever. And we're giving away a diamond core tool V-tip carver. All right. Whew. Okay. Sorry. I got you all excited about speedball. That will be tomorrow. The speedball's happening, and now you know the colors, and I'll have to say them all again tomorrow, but um, speedball's tomorrow. Amico is today. Glazes are good, though, right? I mean, this is an Amico glaze. This is their um, cherry blossom and tangelo together, right? This is Tangelo and Marigold. And what else? Oh, this is their um, Fog and Ice Blue. 
So, oh, and then this one is their Snapdragon Red from Amico. All right, so anyhow, save 20% off um, Speedball underglazes if you go to Clayscapes Pottery, 40% off if you go to Clay King, but Clayscapes is going to give you free shipping on your Speedball underglazes. Uh, Amico at Clayscapes has free shipping on pints. What? That's awesome, right? And then Bailey's got $35 off a mini mite slab roller. My list's over there. You can you probably guess. And Diamond Core has 10% off your entire order and $19 off if you spend, um, no, 19% any order over $100. Of course, go to ClayshareCon.com for everything about this event. Now, I am ClayShare.com. So if you want to know more about what I do and ClayShare, check that out. My name is Jessica Putnam Phillips. Those of you on YouTube, go ahead and follow me, subscribe, you know, sign up for the notifications so that you get to see my video and find us on Instagram, find me on Facebook. And to win, just sign up for emails. Simple, simple, simple. All right, everyone, I will be back at three for the giveaway where I'm gonna give away the correct prizes, I promise, to a whole bunch of lucky people. I think we have, wait, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 prizes. I'm giving away 17 prizes today. So come back for that excitement at three o'clock p.m. Eastern. I'll see you then, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me. And tomorrow, oh, let me just quickly tell you, tomorrow, some more tutorials. I'll be doing modern Mishima and watercolor pottery. So that's this technique right here. We'll be doing this tomorrow. And we're also going to be glazing with Mako's glazes. And I'm going to show you some of my favorite combos from Mako. All right, that's all. That's it. I'll see you guys at three. Bye, everyone.